Good morning, learners, and welcome to my series on back titration. Uh, back titration is a method of determining the quantity of a substance or the percentage purity. That is, if I'm given a sample of a substance, for example, 5 grams, then I can't be able to determine the amount of the pure substance innate and be in a position to work on the percentage purity. Now, how this one is done is by reacting it with an excess amount of a solution, e.g. an acid. So, when I talk about this one here is when I'm, for example, when my analyte or what I'm analyzing is a base, a carbonate, um, then I can use an acid. I can just react it with the excess acid. And then after reacting with the excess acid, then I can titrate the excess acid with an alkali, like sodium hydroxide. With that, I'm able to work out the, 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 the amount of acid that remains. And uh, I can be able to work out the amount of acid that reacted with the analyte by subtracting the remaining amount from the original from the original and the amount of analyte can further be determined using a stoichiometry by this i mean here that of course we need to have that substance we need to know how it reacts with the acid or how it's going to react uh, with with the base maybe if it was acidic so basically that's what we're talking about. So uh, maybe I can put it maybe in a, in, a, in, a, in a picture form. Maybe we see what we're talking about. Now, um, if I have, for instance, 100 cubic centimeters, think about that. I'm going to have maybe 100 cubic centimeters of zero, for example, 0 0.7 molar sulfuric 6 acid here. I'm going to add, I'm going to add for instance, 5 grams of sodium carbonate, and this one is impure, look at that, impure. Uh, just for example, I've taken a, a sample of sodium carbonate, um, which is impure, and I'm supposed to work out the percentage purity of sodium carbonate. Now, um, so I'm going to put my sodium carbonate and I'm going to react it with excess sulfuric 6 acid here. Now, if I work out these moles here, working out these moles here of sulfuric 6 acid here, uh, you realize that uh, they are more, they are more uh, than, they, they are more than even 5 grams of sodium carbonate. That means here that when you put sodium carbonate in your 100 cubic centers of 0.7 molar sulfuric 6 acid here, this sodium carbonate reacts with the sum of the sulfuric 6 acid. Now, once it reacts with the sum of the sulfuric 6 acid, of course, uh, it, it is going to form salt, uh, water, and carbon oxide, and of course, carbon oxide escapes. Then, the resulting solution, if you look at the resulting solution here, it will contain the remaining the remaining sulfuric six acid the remaining sulfuric six acid of course we are going to have salt we are going to have salt that is sodium sulfate and we are also going to have water now so this is what we're going to have here now what we are saying here is that um, we are just going to work out the moles of sulfuric 6 acid here. Now, the moles of sulfuric 6 acid here from titration, uh, we, we can be able to determine it by using, of course, a standard solution of an alkali like sodium hydroxide. So, basically, what we'll be doing as we Practical here, we are going to pipette part of this, we pipette, 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 uh, part of this, and then we titrate it with a standard solution of sodium hydroxide. 
Now with these here, we'll be able to work out or we'll be able to know the amount of sulfuric six acid, uh, for example, in 25 cubic centimeters of this. And with 25, what about 100? We'll be able to work out the, uh, the, the total number of moles in the 100 cubic centimeters uh, of the resulting solution. Now, once you do that, once we do this here, um, I can be able to work out the moles of sulfuric 6 acid that reacted. I can be able to do that. That reacted by taking the original, original moles of sulfuric 6 acid. In other words, these are the moles that were initially here. The moles that were initially here, I can work out this one here by taking molarity times volume in liters. Volume in liters. That's what we're talking about. Minus the moles, the remaining <coughs> remaining moles of sulfuric 6 acid. These are the moles of sulfuric 6 acid that reacted with the impure or with impure uh, sodium carbonate so and of course having worked out the moles of sulfuric six acid that reacted with sodium carbonate using stoichiometry with the idea of stoichiometry if you write a balanced chemical equation then of course you'll be able to work out the moles of sodium carbonate and of course with moles of sodium carbonate uh, with given the relative molecular mass of this, you should be able to work out the mass of sodium carbonate and eventually you'll be able to work out the percentage purity of sodium carbonate. So basically this is what we're talking about. Let us go to the practical part and we see exactly what we are talking about. Now, let us look at the practical uh, part or maybe what we have just discussed so I'm going to have the apparatus with me here. I'm going to have a red hot stand complete. I'm going to have a burette. I'm going to have a pipette. These are apparatus that we use in titration. Of course, I'm going to have my funnel to fill the burette. And then I have two solutions here. I have the sulfur six acid here. I do have my sodium hydroxide whose concentration is known there is a standard solution there and i'm also going to have the sodium carbonate now the procedure our procedure is very simple i have exactly 100 cubic centimeters of sulfuric six acid here 100 cubic centimeters of this I have exactly 5 grams of sodium carbonate in me here. So the procedure is this. The procedure is this here. I'm going to put all the sodium carbonate, all the 5 grams of sodium carbonate in my sulfuric 6 acid. Effervescence occurs. Effervescence occurs due to production of carbon for oxygen. And the vessels occurs due to production of carbon for oxygen. Now, when the effervescence stops, when the effervescence stops, this will indicate, this will indicate, this will indicate that all the sodium carbonate actually reacts or has reacted and what will be left here is the excess sulfuric 6 acid so the reaction of a carbonate with an acid obviously it is it forms a salt in this case it will be sodium sulfate plus water of course we have seen the effervescence we've just seen the effervescence happening due to production of carbon 4 oxide due to production of carbon 4 
Okay, that's what we're talking about. So, effervescence. Yes, so effervescence is about to stop here. Yes, it is done. It is done. So effervescence has just stopped. That means that all the sodium carbonate has reacted with the acid and what could only remain here now is the excess the excess acid all the remaining acid the remaining acid that is what we're talking about now having done that here now this one is what we'll be trying to analyze if you like it you can call it the analyte you can call it the analyte then what i have here with me i have sodium hydroxide whose concentration is known it has actually a molar solution of sodium hydroxide I'm going to fill it I'm going to fill it um, I'm going to fill my burette I'm going to fill my burette with sodium hydroxide note that note that Going to put it to zero. And there I am. Therefore, my initial volume, my initial volume of my titron there, sodium hydroxide is zero. The, the burette reading there, initial burette reading is zero. And then I'll come now. And I'm going to pipette. I'm going to pipette 25 cubic centimeters of my solution, sulfuric acid solution. exactly 25 there I'm going to put it in my conical flask I'm going to put it in my conical flask so I've taken 25 of the 100 cubic centimeters of my resulting solution my, my resulting acid solution and then I'm going to have about two drops of my indicator I'm going to use I'm going to use the phenolphthalein indicator now phenolphthalein indicator is colorless in a nasty that's why you've not noted any change and once I do that now I can carry out the titration I can carry out the titration. So the titration of course involves just opening the top of the burette. 
slowly by slowly there. Um, you can on the walls of the conical flask you can put some just, just to make sure that whatever was on the walls gets into the flask this one does not affect this solution remember adding water does not affect the number of moles now when you realize that the pink color is appearing be cautious be cautious to titrate here, be titrating. Fire drop just to make sure that you get the exact end point. Yes, and the pink color is about to appear permanently. And exactly, you have it there. Yes, we have it there. That is the and the point of that reaction and therefore I can just come here and record the temperature my sorry my can have my final direct reading I can simply have a paper thread like that just to see it and I can see it is exactly 16.5 16.5 so this one will be 16 0.5 cubic centimeters of one molar uh, sodium hydroxide sodium hydroxide now let us get now into calculations let us get into calculations I don't want you to forget here that what we had initially we had the 100 cubic centimeters here, 100 cubic centimeters of sulfuric 6 acid. Then we added the carbonate, that is the impure carbonate, so that we formed this acid which we have been analyzing. And it was the analyte, the analyte here. Now, so what I've just done here, I've Take 25 cubic centimeters of this. This is what is actually. Uh, this is what I have pipetted about 25 cubic centimeters of this, and I've titrated it with sodium hydroxide. Now let me start by uh, working out the moles of sodium hydroxide in the 
16.5 cubic centimeters that I've just used here. Now, um, if the moles of sodium hydroxide is 16.5 here, will be gotten from the molarity, which is 1. I multiply by the volume in liters, therefore 16.5. I divide by 1000 now this one here gives me 0 0.0165 moles these are the moles of sodium hydroxide now uh, how do I work out the moles in 25 cubic centimeters of sulfuric 6 acid I can be able to work out this by having an equation here so I'm going to have my sodium hydroxide plus or reacting with the sulfuric 6 acid here forming sodium sulfate plus water this is the reaction uh, that we get from there now uh, trying to balance this equation here trying to balance that equation there and you realize here I'm going to, here I'll have two, because these are two sodiums here, and then waters are uh, two, I mean the hydrogens are four, then we're going to put a two there, and the thing balances. Therefore, this one here tells us the reacting mole ratio of sodium hydroxide to sulfate is that is two is to one. And therefore, if the moles of sodium hydroxide that reacted were 0 0.0165, remember the, the ratio is two is to one, that means that the moles of sulfuric 6 acid, don't forget that we took um, the moles of so, uh, uh, sulfuric 6 acid here in the 25 cubic centimeters that we pipetted here can be gotten from, I'm going to have the 0 0.0165 and I'm going to divide by 2 so that if I divide that one by 2 here, I should be able to get by 0 0.0165 divide by 2 and I'll get, I will get 0 0.00825 moles. Look at that. These are the moles of sulfuric 6 acid in 25 cubic centimeters. This is 25 uh, cubic centimeters of this here I'm saying that what I've just uh, titrated with here this was my titrant here uh, it is 0 0.0825 moles now what about a hundred of this remember this one was a uh, hundred cubic centimeters now we can say here that uh, if 25 cubic centimeters of space contains those moles 0, 0, 0.0825 what about a hundred what about a hundred cubic centimeters now the hundred cubic centimeters of these here the total of these here will definitely have a hundred just going to close my line 0 0.00825 and i divide this one by 25 here and obviously here um, I'm going to multiply by 4 and what I'm going to get here is 0 0.033 moles look at that 0 0.033 moles so this were actually the moles of the acid these are the moles of sulfuric 6 acid here that remained now to work out the moles of sulfuric 6 acid moles of SO4 that reacted with my carbonate that reacted with my impure sodium carbonate here I'm going to work from the original look at that now the original here uh, the original uh, moles of sulfuric acid here minus the remaining the remaining moles of sulfuric 6 acid look at that the remaining moles of sulfuric 
six acid here. Now, so the original here, we can work it out from, remember the original we knew, uh, the molarity of uh, H2SO4 here, it was 8.7 molar. That means we can get there with the moles, and this will be molarity, which is 0.7, I multiply by the volume, I had 100 of eight, therefore 100 uh, times uh, divided by 1,000 here, I get 0 0.0. Seven, and then I'm going to minus the remaining moles of sulfuric acid. We've just gotten 0 0.033. Once you get that there, you'll get what you like to get here. There's 0 0.07. Uh, subtract 0 0.033 here. I'll get 0 0.037 moles. 0. 037 moles. Now these are the moles of sulfuric six acid that reacted with my impure sodium carbonate. Impure sodium carbonate. Now um, 0 0.037 moles of sulfuric six acid here. We've gotten it from the original minus the remaining. These are the moles of sulfuric six acid that reacted with my carbonate. This is what it reacted with my carbonate. So if that is the case here, I can be able to work out the moles of sodium carbonate. The moles of sodium carbonate that reacted again. How do I work it out? How do I work it out? Now, I know from this equation here that sulfuric six acid here reacts with my sodium carbonate here to give me a sodium sulfate plus water plus CO2. Now, that equation, as you can see, it is actually balanced. It is actually balanced. This means here that the reacting mole ratio of sulfuric six acid to sodium carbonate is actually one is to one. What does this one mean here? This means that the moles of sodium carbonate, the moles of sodium carbonate here, is equal to the moles of sulfuric six acid that it reacted, and which is actually zero point zero three seven. The mole ratio here we are seeing is one is to one. That's the reason why this one is exactly like that. Now let me get the mass. The mass of sodium carbonate here will obviously be gotten from the 0 0.037. I'm going to multiply by the RMs of of the RFM of sodium carbonate. Now sodium is 23, the RM of sodium is 23, therefore 23 times 2 I have uh, 46, carbon is 12, and then I have oxygen is 16 times 3 here, I get 48. Now when you work out that one there, I'll have 0 0.037 times, when you work out this one here, you get 106, and what you're going to get here is actually... This point zero three seven. I multiply by one o six, and I'm going to get exactly three point nine two two grams. Look at that, three point nine two two grams. So what are we talking about? That in the five grams of the impure sodium carbonate, only three point nine two two grams was actually sodium carbonate. Others were impurities. Others were actually impurities. Now, therefore, if I want to get the percentage purity, the percentage purity of my uh, the sodium carbonate here can be gotten from 3.922. I divide by 5 multiply by a hundred percent here. Now if you work out this one here, uh, you'll actually get you get 
78.44 percent uh purity 78.44 percent uh purity in other words if you also want to get to get the impurity the percentage impurity you can take 100 minus 78.44 uh, percent so basically what in a nutshell what we've just done here uh if i'm trying to analyze my sodium carbonate here i need to have a solution whose concentration is known of acid that is known here um i put my sodium carbonate here once you put the sodium carbonate here then come and pick the excess sulfuric six acid here you're going to titrate it with a standard solution of an alkali like sodium hydroxide uh, once you do that there try to get uh the volume the volume of uh, uh Get, get the volume of uh, the acid that reacts with uh, my sodium hydroxide there and for that reaction you can be able to get the moles uh, uh, in the sample that we took for example 25 and then you can be able to get now in 100 and then from there you subtract and get the moles of sodium of sulfur 6 acid that reacted with sodium carbonate once you do that then from an equation you can be able to know the moles of sodium carbonate that reacted and then you can convert the moles of sodium carbonate to the mass and from there be set to go. So basically this is uh back titration. This is actually what we call the back titration and that is the way to go. Uh, with that uh, you're still reminded uh, to subscribe to my channel to be able to get notifications as more of this appears. Thank you very much and God bless you.